Uh, and we're going to begin with a live case from uh, the Frankfurt CBC, and then after that we'll have um, discussions on both new implants and also epicardial approaches. So, Horst, can you hear us? Good morning, uh, Randy. This is Horst. Welcome to Frankfurt. With me is Dr. Lam from uh, Hong Kong. We have Dr. Jovanovic uh, from our center here at the TEE, and then we have uh, Jennifer for the case history. Jennifer, please go ahead. Our next patient is a 83-year-old male with uh, cardiac decompensation due to severe calcified aortic valve stenosis in 2000, September 2017, treated with a TAVI in October 2017. Furthermore, he has paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, currently treated with ASS and clopidogrel. Um, his past medical history includes CAD with PCI also in October 2017, pulmonary hypertension and hypertension. His risk scores are a CHAD score of 3, a CHADS vas score of 6, a HASBLED score of 5. His ECG currently shows sinus rhythm and a complete left bundle branch block. His TTE showed a left ventricular ejection fraction of 45%, moderate mitral valve regurgitation, mild uh, aortic and tricuspid regurgitation. Okay, thank you very much. So the TE probe is already in. So Bojan, can you show us yes. what you could see there? Good morning, everybody. I'm beginning with the four chamber view with zero degree. I'm showing for thrombi. I put the X plane and I'm scrolling to. 45, 90 degrees, and 135. So that's all to be pretty sure. good, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Very clean. Any questions or comments so far from the, from the audience or from the panelists? Randy? No, it looks okay. like it's uh, relatively straightforward. Yeah. So I know you're going to put a uh, uh, Lambre in this, you know, with YY there. Is that correct? Uh, how do you know? I, yeah. I don't understand I don't know. that. I'm going <laughs> to ask Maurice. Well, I'm, I'm actually, okay with uh, all the devices. This has a I mean. good watchman key. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, you are absolutely right. So we will most likely use... Uh, Actually, we would definitely use a Lampard device, okay. and we should actually change position then. No, 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 so no, no, no. Come, come over okay. here, because we want you to show us what, how do you do it. So the, uh, that's the sick friend sheath on the groin. Okay. So we will now transeptal puncture. We have okay. a, a St. Jude sheath. Is that okay for you? Yeah. Yeah. No okay. problem. You know, okay. uh, do you need measurements for this? Because you haven't shown us any measurements. Uh, well, let's do the transeptal puncture and I then took some angle. measurements on, on the echo. Okay, then let's go through the measurements. Right, okay, that's fine. Relative software wire. You want to I show you the 3D so the measurements. Okay. Should, okay. On the, the left okay. appendages. Okay. Alright. It's something oh. about Be careful. 24, 25 mm. to 15 millimeters. Okay. It's 20. not round, it's. Uh, Little bit over. 24, 25 over 15, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> Horst, good morning. This is Eberhard. Can, Hi. You, can, can you just uh, also, okay. just when you do the transeptal puncture for the audience, say where you puncture and yeah. why? That's what we will do. So now yeah. he is introducing the, the sheath sheet. into the supervena cava. Yeah, yesterday we had a long discussion where to puncture, and uh, the common way, as you all know, is inferior posteriorly. So, uh, Yatin, is there any specific technique for transeptal puncture when you do the lumbar device, or is it as well, usual? I think uh, compared with other devices, in general, the puncture site uh, for lumbar device is not as crucial as like watchman device, that you really need a coaxial alignment of the sheath to the opening of the appendage because you really want to specifically align the sheath along the anterior lobe. So that's why you really need the puncture site to be very low and very posterior. And this, in most of the cases, is correct also for lambre. But I have the experience that even you use a, like routine, like transpuncture site at the fossa ovalis, 
most of the time you would do the job. Except that there is one kind of very funny anatomy that you see the reverse chicken wing appearances that in that situation you need to puncture more anteriorly. So, so now we see on echo the long axis view and short axis view. Yeah, I'm going down from the SVC. Your arrow is pointing towards? Yeah, it's about 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, okay. Yeah. Tell us when you change that. So you see, see the tenting there in yeah. the septum secundum. It's pretty much anteriorly, isn't yeah. it? Yes, that's right. So, may so now I actually probe fall down to the fossa. Mm -hmm. From the bicapal view, you see now I'm at the high fossa and also anterior. So in this case, I would like to go slightly more inferior. So I pull down a little, a little bit. And you rotate it to 6 o'clock? Yeah, or? and I also okay. rotate a little bit more posterior. So I think here should be the site. For puncture, right? Should I it's go through? It's not very inferior. It's more in the mid segment, but yeah, yeah should be okay. Yeah? Okay. So he's puncturing now. Yeah. So you go a little bit more in posteriorly, right? Yeah, yes, correct. You are through. So the yeah. needle is not still much. It's lot, not through lot of tenting. yet. Now, now it's you through. see the tenting yeah. is lost and mm -hmm. is through. Then I usually I don't go straight with the the system. I like to go with a wire to pulmonary vein. Yeah, we can track. do that. Which wire would you like to have? Well, usually for SL1, they have a wire, a combinator <laughs> system. Mm -hmm. So, because I find in some cases, the septum might be very difficult to pass through, especially patients with previous intervention in the left atrium, like multiple ablation in the past. So, I saw the LA pressure is pretty low, about 5 or 6, so give more infusion, please. Yeah. Uh, do we give heparin? No. Uh, uh, we, uh, not me? yet. Okay. But heparin is ready. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, uh -huh. so sick well here. Uh, so, um, just for the a tip for the audience, maybe that if the needle's not going through, then rather than keeping on pushing, uh, you can get a diathermy and just touch it, and it pops across very easily. This was yeah. very straightforward. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's help. another way. Of course, there are dedicated transeptal devices from Bayless than you can use, but it's more expensive, right? We have seen this yesterday, yeah, it's much more expensive. Yeah, now I think it's in the LA, yeah? Huh? You are in the left appendix. You see yes. the yeah. problem of uh, uh, go through with the dilator is no problem, but go through with the sheath sometimes can be problematic. Mm -hmm. Now I'm happy. We so can now give, uh, just you remove the dilator yep. now, right? Sure. Yeah. So I just remove the dilator and also remove the uh, wire. And then I will just give a heparin at this juncture, check the LA oh, pressure. Excessive. Make sure so that. Are you deliberately leaving it in the uh, vein or just in the middle of the atrium? Uh, this is actually uh, quite close to the pulmonary vein orifice because I don't want to manipulate the wire more. This, because it's pointing actually to the pulmonary vein, so it's very easy. Uh, I just go through with a stiff wire. Flush. And this is Amplatz Extra Stiff, is that okay for you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So why, why? For Hi. the Lambre device, what size sheets uh, will you have to use? Uh, the largest Lambre device is 36 millimeter, and it would be uh, okay if you go for a 10 French sheet, which is the largest. Like if you have a smallest device, uh, that's 16, then you can only use an 8 French sheet. So here we had a uh, landing zone 25 by 15. Yeah. So which device would you like to? Um, so can we do another measurement from the uh, like pulmonary vein tip to the mitral valve? Mm -hmm. So in which degree? Um, maybe uh, just short axis, around 45, axis? To, uh, 45 to 90 degree. Because for any this type device, I think that happens with amulet as well. You always worry that the, the, the disc actually is impinging on the mitral valve. For a uh, Lambert device, because we can size, of course, based on the landing zone, but uh, if you use Lambert more, you will understand that even you, you choose one size upper or one size lower, it doesn't really matter. It will not affect the stability a lot. But if you choose one size bigger, then the associated cover will be larger. So, so from where to where to measure? From the pulmonary uh, ridge? From the pulmonary ridge. Right there, yeah. like a little higher. Yeah, to the mitral annulus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here. So okay. it's about 26. 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's about 26. But mind you, once deploy the cover of the device, the cover actually suck inside. So there will be nearly three to five millimeter loss in diameter. So from this, you think maybe the, if the disc is 30, I'm still okay, right? So then the device I can choose is, how big is the landing zone? 25 by 15. 25 by 15, so it's really- uh, That was uh, based on echo. We didn't do an angiogram yet. Okay. Would you like to do an angel or would you like to rely Yeah, I, I would like to do an angel. Okay. I'd like to do an angel, just mm -hmm. to confirm. Mm -hmm. And why, okay. why, can you talk us through your decision making in terms of how you pick what size device to use? All right, like for this case, for example, if the landing zone is 22, uh, then I would probably choose a, a device that is uh, two millimeter to six millimeter larger. So I can choose 24 device, 26 device, or even 28 device. Oh no, I need to go, go. With the sheath? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you don't need the pigtail? I normally go with the system, the delivery system, and then I go with the pigtail. So okay. shall we just exchange the delivery system? Sure. Yeah. Which size? Uh, 10 French. Uh -huh. So why, why horse, then if I, let's say, if I choose uh, 24, the associated cover would be a 30. If I choose 26, then it would be even larger. So that's why, um, in this case, I probably would choose a relatively smaller uh, device just to avoid the cover being so big and then it would impinge on the mitral valve leaflet. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at the sheath configuration. It's quite similar like with the other. Yeah. Uh, can you That's see right. this? Yeah. So I'm rotating as double curve as, yeah. as most of the other devices, right? Yeah. Okay. It has two curves, 45 and 30. Mm -hmm. So. The 45 is for going through the septum. The 30 is to help you align better in the appendage. What is the minimum depth that you need for the Lambert device, YY? Minimum catheter? You mean the size? No, no, the, the depth of the appendage, the, the minimum depth, depth that you uh, would I think 10 millimeter would be good. And in fact, we have some cases, even the depth is smaller because we have a special type of Lambert device where the loop is really very small, we can actually find a space. Although it, overall it looks like it's less than 10 millimeter, but if you find a small loop, you can actually anchor that small umbrella in that loop. So there are cases that we are able to do it with a depth less than 10 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So I'm going to exchange for 10 French sheep. It. And it's always my habit to uh, engage the appendage with uh, uh, pigtails. So maybe this is, this is someone that been doing Watchman a lot, and then you change over, then I still have this habit. I think it's a good habit, actually, to engage uh, the appendage, use a pigtail. It's a lot safer for beginners. Well, I... Well, of course, no. Paul <laughs> will not say something like that. <laughs> But I see people really perforate their appendage with the stiff wire. Really? Yeah. Which wire? Well, usually it's this wire. I don't believe that. You don't believe that? <laughs> okay, it happens. <laughs> so uh, in this case, I think uh, one very interesting point is that this patient actually had a core valve implantation. Why not you do a combined procedure at the same time? I think Why it makes sense. We? Huh? Why should we? It's a different axis. Different Isn't axis? It? So we can do like tower and then after that, we just close the appendage. Is it because of the reimbursement issue that you have to well, reimbursement, stage the procedure? Reimbursement would definitely uh, uh, prevent us from doing this. Okay. But uh, it's also, I think, valve. medically, one? I think also it's not medically really so her, useful uh, to combine her, this. Yes. The question, uh, the, the sheet size, this is a uh, not outer, but inner diameter 10, correct? Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah, yeah like, it's, uh, like everything else. Yeah, yeah. So now you have all this bleeding here. That is yeah. because he does not like to exchange yeah. all the wire. Yeah. There will also be a high risk of thrombus formation inside of the sheath really? at this time. Okay. I have seen thrombus formation okay. in the sheath. <laughs> so that's why we have to uh, do it carefully every step. <laughs> okay. So then I can go in with a pigtail. Uh, flush first? Or? No, no, we don't need to flush it here. Because of all the thrombus? Or? Well, no, no, no. I would not inject through this sheath. I would just inject through the pigtail. So okay. 
it should be okay. That means you will have even more thrombus formation inside of the sheath at this uh, time. Well. Point. So that's why before I deploy the device, I make sure they are uh, very good bleed back from the cavity. Okay. Okay. So I'm putting in uh, five French, right? Five this French. is four French. Mm -hmm. Four French. Like four, five okay. French. Well, well, four French is good. But I think what matters really is the diameter of the uh, pigtail catheter. I see in some very small appendages, there are people making like five millimeter diameter pigtail. I think it's very useful. Uh -huh. In that case, oh, actually it comes out a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Okay. I think I'm at the odds. You can remove the peel away. Yep. The whole point of using the pigtail is to fill in the space. Yep. So to use a four French is not necessarily an advantage. Well, uh, but obviously yes, but the five French would also not fill the space because yep. it's and quite hard to do, yeah. I think I'm in the appendages, yeah. so yeah. I can do an Wait, What do you mean now? by filling in the uh, space? Yeah. Basically, so that when you're to manipulating to your sheath, yeah. you have less of a ledge, or, or you know, obviously oh, between it. Yeah, yeah, that was the whole concept. Yeah. I mean, it's not just because yeah. it's a big deal. It's just to have, you can't use a dilator. So yeah. this is the next you best thing. But to go for French is counterintuitive to me. Uh, sometimes well, the, 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 the tail of the four French is yeah. a little bit smaller than the yeah. tail from the five French. So that's the advantage. And... Uh, yeah, I understand your point. So when you use a five French, there is a little bit less thrombus yeah. formation inside of yeah, the this. This is a thrombus formation in the sheath, right? Shall we go to the caudal view? Like yeah, how are your caudal? Yeah. So be careful. I'm rotating. Uh, be careful. And I so think uh, yeah. one one thing I'm against the picture uh, the 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 uh, four French is you see here actually. Uh, I need to track this uh, delivery catheter exactly. uh, yeah. exactly. against and it will provide a That's not very point. good support. Huh? That's the point. So you have to put a wire. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that. I need to put a stiff wire. A wire inside. and then it happens. But yeah. that's the, the reason a little Am bit. Am I in the appendage or still in the, the pulmonary vein? I think I'm still in the pulmonary vein. Huh? Post, what was the advantage of the four French? You are well, the, the, the in the in pulmonary vein. vein. Yeah, can we just go AWO maybe? AWO? I think I'm still in the pulmonary vein. Yeah, yeah. You are. One of the small branch. Again? Yeah. Uh, no, maybe AWO is better. AWO without tilting? Okay. Yeah. Of course, in my mind, we didn't hear you. What was the advantage of the four French um, pigtail? Four French pigtail? No, I think, I don't think there's any additional advantages. Well, there's a difference of 0.3 millimeter. Okay. Now I'm in now the appendage. You are so I think it's always uh, very good to actually engage the appendage from AWO view because uh -huh. it shows okay. the relationship of pulmonary vein and left atrium better. Back to AWO cordon? Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Oops. And you see there are two markers on the sheath. Uh, that is used for, uh, for us to actually calibrate. If you want to use these two markers, you have to make sure the rings of the markers are being closed. So we can actually do it by actually counterclockwise rotate the whole system. Now here, uh, all right, it's nearly closed. Then we can do an angiogram here. Mm -hmm. Wait okay. a second. All right. Need higher That's about uh, 10 millimeter from the upper edge of the marker to the lower edge of the marker. You still did not flush the sheath, right? Is that no, okay? no, 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 no. Okay. So, so ready? Yeah. Okay. That looks pretty so good. So how, how, far, how far do you need to be with the sheath in the body of the appendage? Uh, actually, you see now the tip of the sheath is actually at the ostium or the landing zone. I should say landing zone for people doing yeah. amulet. This is where I need to go. I don't need to put the sheath further inside. So just at the, at the origin? Yeah, of where this you is think. actually perfect. You see at the 5 o'clock there's a tiny yeah. indentation. That's yeah. where the left circumflex is. Yeah. Uh, I think here is very nice. Okay, shall we do a measurement here? I don't think it has 24. Huh? It looks smaller. You see the 10 millimeter markers. Can the echo go to 135? Yep. Oops. Why not? Okay. Just a moment. You can see on the right side. Mm. Is this the biggest frame already? Okay. So you don't see much of the sheath it's because it's still proximal. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I got it. What is with the arrow is gone? Okay. There it is. Yeah. We can do a measurement like here. here. Yes. And then go up to the shoulder. Yeah. Here. Around here. Yes. So it's about 18. Well, that is consistent with the measurements angiographically. We had yeah. two different measurements, 15 yeah. and, and 20 something. Right? I think 20 something is probably yeah. too big. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, because we, we measure uh, one like uh, at the beginning, like 26, right? 26 in the, uh, uh, from the pulmonary vein ridge to the uh, mitral valve annulus. Yes. Like mm -hmm. based on 18, I can choose like 24 device or even 22 device or even 20 device. So uh, the cover in general is six millimeter larger. So uh, in this case, even I choose 24, I'm happy because the associated cover will be 30. And then after deploying of the cover, you will lose few millimeters. So it, I will not definitely touch the mitral valve. Have you ever seen why, why, that, why? that the device touches the mitral valve? Uh, well, for my cases, if you use this approach, you then seldom see that. You mm -hmm. seldom see so, that. So why, why? We're, I, I'm confused as to, it seems like you're more worried about the cover rather than the body or whatever you call it in, in, within. No, I'm because actually, I'm actually, uh, it's not worry. I'm actually trying to better seal the, the orifice. Let's say I know the orifice is that big. If I have a device with a bigger cover, then I will be able to better seal the orifice and reduce the leak. But associated. you just said that it's 50, you're taking it as an 18. However, measurement said 25, 18. So why did you choose one versus the other? Uh, I think 25 is probably not correct, huh? Do you think it has what 25? A, this, because in cordal view, that's usually the biggest measurements that you can get. How, like about, it, how about doing a 3D TEE and looking at those numbers? Yeah, you can. You can how, also how do about, that. How about I, doing an REO I do this live. Angio. Okay. So now the uh, echo expert is doing the measurements live. See, the 3D would tell you basically where is what. Well, of course, you can always get a very accurate measurements from 3D, but uh, what I, I normally know is that for Lambry, you don't need that correct sizing because one of the stabilizing mechanism is while well, the umbrella, it has a bigger clause down, when it grows out, it will get trapped in pectinate muscle. So uh, it will be very stable, even though the, uh, the, the, the umbrella is not really fully stenting the, the appendage. So, the, so, so unlike other devices of the same kind of, you don't think that stability is uh, uh, worsened? No, I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. I think it does have a lot of barbs, doesn't it, that really holds it in position, so it's yep. very difficult to pull out. Um, will it help if we do an REO cranial angiogram as well, because then you can have an orthogonal view of it in case it looks any bigger there? I know you said that caudal was the bigger view. Yeah, yeah usually caudal is the biggest view. Usually 90% caudal is yeah. usually bigger, but if you want, I can do a cranial view, but I think in this case, um, <laughs> the caudal view should look bigger because if you sure. look at the 3D reconstruction, the longest diameter of the OVO, uh, you see the, uh, at the low, lower left bottom, is yeah. actually long axis is actually uh, in the caudal view. The green yeah, line is more, uh, looks more on the short axis and cranial view. Yeah, caudal is always the largest. So what, what's the measurement you're getting? Um, he's trying to do some measurements. Not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's that's it. That's okay. Huh? Can you measure there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. That's very big. Huh? It's the same. Okay. So it's uh, how much is it? I can't see. 20, Twenty-five. Twenty-four to sixteen. Twenty-five yeah. so by sixteen. Twenty-five by sixteen. Yeah. So. And the A2 is uh, uh, readily smaller, huh? Yeah. A2 is 15, 16. But you're measuring 16. it quite a bit above the uh, circumflex, right? You're going about two, three millimeters above the circumflex there. Um, yeah. Not quite. If you c can you look at the screen? Can yeah. you see the echo screen? Yeah. yeah we see you're it. cutting uh, we actually obliquely, well. not so really. Uh, yeah. Here's the your circumflex. Line. Yeah. Okay. If I rotate all the way around, can you see we're following it? We're just over, s we're above some of it here. Mm. Yeah, you're, you're above it there. Okay, I got it. But we're pretty much there all the way around. Can you see that? 
So yeah. there, so clearly there is a 25 by 15, 16. Yeah, 25 yeah. by and 16. And so why why said 18 or, or that's to accommodate the not too large mm. uh, atrial disc. So do you think still with this measurement? Yeah, 18, I think so. I think 18 so. is enough. Uh, no, 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 18 is definitely not enough for the device. You need to oversize. I think either 24 or 22 would do the job. Yes. But you said oversizing is not a disadvantage, right? No. And but in this case, because in this case, if you choose a 24 device, the cover will be 36. So uh, we know that the, if you choose further, like 26, it's also okay, but the cover will be slightly bigger already. So, so why, why? You're basing your measurements more on the disk size versus depth That's or anything else. Is that correct? Um, well, I usually consider both. First, I have to consider um, the diameter at the landing zone. And secondly, I have to consider the, the oh, diameter that I measure from the palm reviewing tip to the micro analyst. Well, if that difference is too big, for example, it's larger than 10 millimeter, because you know Lambrita has a special device, then I can choose a small special device with a small umbrella and big cover. If the difference is less than uh, 10 millimeter between these two diameter, then I would, I would just choose a device that oversized, not oversized too, too much, so in order to avoid uh, having a bigger disc. Find the hole. So Huawei, this is a tapered sort of uh, appendage. Yep. Can you put the, uh, a smaller device more distal and because it's held so firmly, then the, your disc just curves in a bit more. Have you done that sort of thing as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did that sometimes. I did that sometimes, uh, especially uh, while uh, in the appendage, you see, because this device required sometimes patic pectinate muscles for trapping the umbrella. Oh, so if yeah. it is a very smooth, mm -hmm. uh, like very smooth uh, portion in the proximal and appendage, and the appendage is very yes. big, and then I see in the distal part of the appendage, there are some pectinate muscles. Sometimes I would choose a very small umbrella device with a bigger cover, with the small umbrella put in really distal. And in this regard, I think it would be more stable. I, I think, please keep your questions. Uh, we should proceed and yeah, then yeah, have yeah. the discussion. Yeah. So which size would we? 24, maybe. 24? 24. Okay. So now we are looking for the device, so now of course you yeah. can continue to ask questions. I just wanted to postpone the discussion and not, not stop the case. Yeah. And it's uh, very safe during the procedure because you always keep a pigtail in the appendage and you don't advance the sheath at all. And even the patient is breathing, moving, I think it's, it's, it should be reasonably safe. Horse, can we say something? Sure. Or there's still a band? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> 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 so, so wh why? How does it come by that those numbers are for the disc and the uh, atrial component? So, called the the umbrella and, and the disc. So, how? Why th is this kind of matching? Is it uh, maybe too big, or is there the difference? H how did you come up with these di sizing chart matrix? Well, uh, we, we are actually doing that based on uh, some previous studies on human uh, LAA measurements. And so we come up with these measurements. Uh, because, you know, in China, we try to tailor-made some coats, suits, for, for uh, people having different body size. So while we first uh, designed this device, we hope to provide a more uh, uh, sizing options. That's it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to aim at. Maybe yeah. there is a, a, a bigger matrix needed. Sounds like your engineers have a completely different training than our engineers, uh, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we, we are more complex people. <laughs> so uh, would you like to explain the device? Uh, so you see the device, there's an umbrella. Uh, you see the membrane of the umbrella and also a cover. In this case, I choose a 24 millimeter uh, umbrella, so the cover would be 30 millimeter. And um, so the beauty of this device is that it can be fully recaptured. Uh, so if you can zoom in closer, you will see, or uh, I try to show you, maybe I stabilize the system first. On the umbrella shoulder, there are actually tiny hooks on the shoulders uh, that will help you engage into the appendage wall. And then if you turn it over, you see there are bigger hooks down there. These are actually used for pectinate trapping. So it's a double, 
anchoring uh, a stabilizing mechanism. So that's why it makes this device very stable once it's in the appendage. So maybe horse can fully retrieve the device. So when he pull on the delivery cable, you see that the disc will be covered, uh, will be uh, uh, retracted into the sheath. And then the next step, when he pull further on the cable, you see there's infolding of the membrane, and all these hooks will be wrapped inside this membrane. So the hook structures will not be damaged. So by doing that, uh, you can actually reposition the device, recapture the device if you don't like the initial position for around five times. It should be okay. Actually, Weiwei, it's the first time I've noticed that, you know, the very large hooks, they've got a lovely shiny blob at the mm. end of them. Yes. So uh, slightly yeah. more protective on the muscle. That's, That's right. Te technical term, blob. Yeah. I like the term Bob, huh? Okay, so um, to deploy this device, I think we, uh, just to make sure uh, in the furrow we are still in the right position. Right? I actually go in a little bit because once I remove this pigtail, yeah, the sheath tends to jump a little bit. Okay, so now I remove the pigtail. And then I will make sure there's some bleed back because horse always worry that there may be thrombus formed in mm -hmm. the catheter. So that's why I usually allowed one or two mil bleed back. So make sure uh, there's no thrombus in the system. Of course, if your chief is touching the LA wall, it will also have no uh, bleed back. Okay, now the device is ready to go. So you need continuous flushing for yes, this, right? Because this, this is the good thing about this system is the sheath is small, but when you have a very small system, you push in anything, you create a very high negative pressure inside. So you're going to push in air. So it's my habit always to make sure there's actually saline coming out at the other end of the system. So, it's, so when I push the cable in, I will not suck in any air. So I'm going to advance the system now. So maybe, so I do a cine here. So from this cine, you can see there's a radio opaque connecting junction uh, on the system. And then beyond that, distal to that uh, radio opaque junction is the umbrella. You see the tiny dots at the tip, bobs, you call it, right? And then uh, the, 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 this, the cover is actually below this radio opaque marker. To deploy this device, there are two steps. First step is to push uh, until this radio opaque connecting junction comes out, it means that the umbrella is fully deployed. And the second step is just to unsheath to bring out the cover. So now I try to advance this to the tip. Okay, here. So I usually from here, I would love to have some angel control. So I would do an angiogram here. Oh, we have to connect. Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. That means I can stop flushing now, yeah. right? Oh. That's right. Can you see it here? Find it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cine? Mm -hmm. or, okay, we can do a cine. Okay. So you see, now I'm actually quite distal to where I want to land, right? So I will pull back the whole system. So I don't need to deep seat that many. Okay, now I pull nearly to the ostium. And then I would do a Sydney while I try to deploy the umbrella. So this is how I do. So now the umbrella is coming out. Until this radio opaque connecting junctions come out of the sheath. All right. So we can see from the echo, the umbrella is being deployed beyond the circumflex level. Okay. Can we do another projection just to uh, mm -hmm. try to get rid of this cover out so the audience yeah. can see nicer? The, no, even worse. Maybe can you move the floral mm -hmm. over yeah. a bit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Slightly better. <coughs> we can do an <coughs> injection here. Mm -hmm. The echo is looking good already. Yeah. You see, this is a very important uh, uh, deployment <coughs> view. You see this, the, the, the radio opaque connecting junction and the tiny bobs are actually on the same line. It means that the device is, uh, uh, the, the umbrella is nicely opened 
Okay, because even this umbrella is not opened into food position like that, it would be very stable. But in that situation, uh, actually it's not the membrane is touching the distal appendage. Maybe some of the bare structs is touching the uh, distal appendage. So I don't think that's, that's good. I think it's actually dangerous. Okay, so now I'm happy. So I just uh, unsheathe to bring out the cover. Well, I would just explain that again. I didn't quite get what you said. Uh, you see the, the umbrella when it fully opens. The umbrella can be open 100%. This is open 100%, right? So it's always very difficult. I have a presentation. Uh, shortly after this case, I will show you how it means. Um, so I, I will explain to you later, maybe. Now I'm actually trying to unsheath to just to bring out the cover. Okay. You're pushing quite strongly. Is that on purpose? Uh, no, you can do it gently. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see now I actually deploy the, uh, deploy the cover. And you see, uh, because just now we measured that distance. So you see now I choose a device with reasonable cover size. So we would associate with better seal in the orifice. And it will not also touching the mitral valve. Is there a particular distance that you need to have uh, with the uh, disc and the and the bulbs, or is it a standard thing? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, the, the actually the distance from the umbrella to the cover is around ten millimeter, and if you like, let's say, put the umbrella more distal, the cover will be drawn inside. So I. I don't Let's normally go. recommend you to do mm. that. So do you have to do color now? Yes. You see the echo images? Yeah. Come back, come back. Busha, can you welcome Busha, by the way? Yeah. Can you, so can we're, you, we're, can we're you looking comment? at it now. So first of all, the deployment was, looked really lovely. The position looked really good. And now that the disc is fully deployed, it's covering the orifice actually very nicely. So we're at 60 degrees here just to show you. So at the moment, we've not seen abnormal flow. We've just noted on 3D that the disc in the lateral um, side of the, uh, of the appendage isn't fully covered, but we're not sure that that actually has any implications because we're not seeing color yet. So we're going to just go around to 90 now. We're going to just show the center of the device lovely like that. So you can see, oh, there's a tiny bit of flow here we've picked up. That may, that's, that's right. yeah. Do you want to change the baseline to a, to a lower baseline on the color? The baseline we can do. I don't particularly like. Obviously, I used to do that, but I think it adds. Um, it just confuses. Is, is that the baseline? <coughs> bring, just bring the scale down. But that flow is very tiny. Yeah. Yeah. It's a barely no, just any. Color, just the scale. Bring the scale. Sorry, the machine's in German, so I'm just struggling to find out what the scale is. No, not, mm, not that. Just one, just one. Yeah. <coughs> That's it. Perfect. Thank you. So you see, if we do this, what you tend to get is a lot of. Um, I think, I think a lot of artifacts, and I think it gets confusing. I personally don't like turning the scale down. Okay. So it, uh, but, but we'll just show you that leak as well. Yeah, you're over, Let's show over you that leak there. there. The so you can see the leak yeah. there. It's tiny, yeah. but Very it's, tiny. it's associated with, I think, this disc not fully lying flat as well, possibly. But remember, the device, I th it looks like it's under a bit of tension, the device, to yeah. us. Well, so actually, actually uh, I think you are pushing on the device oh. a little bit, right? Yeah. Look at the fluoro. Yeah, releasing right. the tension. I'm sure of this, huh? Yeah. yeah. I so release all the tension. I'll just explain that. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do is we'll, ju we'll just look at this on X-Plane, and then we'll just go around. We'll keep going around to look. So you can see the color that we are picking up there. Yeah. It's tiny. It's just here on the edge. Can you see it on the orthogonal view? Yeah. It's, it seems to be actually between the disc and the um, lobe. So I'm not that excited by that so far. Yeah. But we'll... I think it will be gone well, after yeah. endophilization. Yeah. Yeah. And it um, looks like we've actually got seal of the appendage below that, though. So um, we're going to keep going around to 135 gradually, keeping the, the, va the in view. Yeah, lovely. Uh, it looks very good. There's a ceiling. But we're just going to find the device. There you go. Um, and you can see a bit of flow. F so this is the bit we did see on 3D, is the um, disc. You can just see it's just it's not fully lying flat against the orifice there, uh, and you see a bit of flow in that. But again, I don't think it's a problem because the disc where it's lying, the, sorry, the lobe, it appears to be fully sealing what's below, th beyond that point. So I just show you that on 3D as well. So while she's oh. doing that, why, why? Do you think that 
a larger disk would be sitting more flat? No, I don't think so. Um, because this, if you're looking at the design of this disk, it's not really a flat disk. It's kind of like a satellite disk. Uh, if you look carefully on the device itself, so it's bound to have this kind of uh, in-drawing after deployment. So it's different from the amulet, it's uh, actually a flat disk. So when we design it, it's actually like a, a satellite disk. Okay, so there's your 3D of your disk. And you can see, so you can see that there's the mitral valve, there's the left upper pulmonary vein there. So there's the, the device sitting here, and the, the flow that we're seeing is just round the back here, where you can see it's not fully opposing that very odd oval-shaped orifice there. However, as I said, the, disc, uh, the, the lobe appears to be covering the actual uh, lobe. So we just put some colour on there, see if we can see anything exciting. We'll just take a second to reset itself. While Butcher is doing that, wait, wait, the... Uh the, the mechanism that you attach the device to uh, the cable with mm. is a screw. It's a screw. It's a and screw. so when you release the screw, mm. it mm. may mm. just settle mm. the disc mm. a little bit anyway. Yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. usually the case. Yeah. That's yeah. usually yeah. the case. Mm -hmm. But it can also get worse, yeah, right? Yeah, it can also get worse. Yeah. I, I thought by design it is a little bit of a convexity, so yeah. it shouldn't really matter. Yeah. I think it would be nice if we design a system like the previous uh, AMLED version that you uh, enable wire in wire, you release it, and then the tension is gone and it will be able to assess. Otherwise, uh, I think for any this type of device, when you have a cable connecting to it, uh, it's always a, a problem that you, you, you don't 100% sure what is going to happen. So you're talking uh, about the flexible wire which is connected yeah. to the device and leaves the device without any tension before yeah, your final release. That's right, that's yeah. right. They used to have that, but yeah. I, I think, I like the design. I hope mm. they will come back with similar design, but of course, at the beginning, they have some uh, safety concern because the wire inadvertently just unscrewed before the device inside the system. But I think that's a good idea, because if you're looking at how we deploy most of the ASD devices, they try to move into that direction. Uh, he's complaining about the TV. So it looks I like think he needs he to finish the case. Yeah, yeah we should finish right the case, right? and then he can... The patient said the device looks good. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So to, to uh, deploy the device, um, actually, you just uh, counterclockwise rotate the delivery cable. Is that the scale? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm doing the do a cine. So this yeah, is please. what happened. Mm. I think this case didn't change a lot. Huh? No. Right. No. Uh, if if you say that the design was strong, you wouldn't expect it to change if it is this convexity. No. Okay. Should we do an angiogram? Yep. Let's do an angiogram. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do an angio before release? Uh, no, we well, this is just for cosmetic reasons, so we can do a better one, oh, shall okay. we? Yeah. 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 Well, from, the, from the echo, mm -hmm. it's usually we rely more on echo because this is a gold standard. We assess the degree of leak. On the other side, you do this without TE, right, oh, if yeah. I remember correct. Yeah. So you do it without TE, but you rely on TE. No, I mean, uh, for TE assessment, is more for clinical trial. When you have more clinical experiences, you can actually oh. judge based on angiogram whether this patient is likely having significant leak. Mm. If there are really significant mm. leak, then you probably need to have bail out TE during the procedure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. But most of the time, you don't need that. I think I've done more than 40 cases, only one or two cases I need to have bail out TE. I would suggest that we immediately oh. go to mm. Yatlin's talk because that's uh, already ready there. So you yeah. can just, I can do this. Okay, I just pull out the system. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and then just the move over to the, okay. to the presentation and then we can continue the discussion about this device. Okay, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you.